All right, uh, so let's get started. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jason Key. I'm at uh, SP Grid, Harvard Medical School in Boston. Uh, thanks for signing in today. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Professor Alexander Bonvin, who's joining us from the University of Utrecht. So uh, uh, Professor Bonvin, is, uh, his lab is primarily interested in, to, in intermolecular interactions between proteins. Uh, a recent paper just came out in eLife. Uh, if you'd like to take a look, uh, for the most recent paper from his lab. The um, sort of main thing I think people know about the Bonvin lab is that uh, the lab is produces Haddock, which is a software response uh, that you can use to uh, dock two proteins with either NMR uh, restraints or mutagenesis or essentially um, restraints that you can generate experimentally and somewhat um, uh, flexibly to do your intermolecular docking. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Alexander. Thank you very much, Jason. Thanks for the introduction and uh, hello to everyone. So here we go. So I'm going to tell you about uh, our software to model complexes, biomolecular complexes, ad hoc. And I'm going to describe the, or spend some time describing the differences between running it locally, and there is a local version of ad hoc currently installed on the SB grid, and running it via the web server. So as Jason uh, already explained, we are speaking here about molecular docking. So predicting how two molecules interact. You need for that, of course, some uh, starting structures for the components or crystal structure, NMR structure, or you should be able to model them. Uh, in general, in docking, you have to realize in the field that large conformational changes are extremely difficult to model. And uh, binding, induce, folding events, so you can pretty much forget about it uh, using the current docking technology. So we are speaking in general about rather limited conformation and changes. Um, so Haddock uh, is currently at version 2.2, which is going to appear on SB Grid uh, soon, I hope. Uh, we can deal with different types of molecules, so we are not limited to protein-protein, but we can deal with uh, peptides, nucleic acids, small molecules, small ligands, RNA, and any combination of them. And also what is special about ad hoc is that we can do the modeling of multiple components at the same time. So up currently the limit is six. So six different molecules can be docked simultaneously. So we don't do a binary docking and combine everything, but we dock all of them. And as Jason already explained to you, uh, the, the main feature in ad hoc compared to other docking program is that we try as much as possible to make use of experimental or predicted if you don't have any experimental data to uh, model the complexes. So this is uh, an overview slide showing you some of the data that can be uh, uh, used. In principle, any experimental source which can give you information about either the binding site on your protein or can provide specific distances. Think of uh, mass spectrometry these days with uh, the detection of crosslinks these are specific distances between amino acids, uh, not so accurate maybe, but this is useful information. So it all started from, from, from NMR in the old days where we had the ability to map interfaces, uh, but then we have been moving to adding more and more data, uh, cross links from MS I mentioned. Uh, MS these days also you can use it to, to perform HD exchange experiments. And all of these are telling you something about the interface in your system but they might not tell you how they interact. So you get uh, localization, but not the pairwise contact, basically. And if you don't have anything, you can always resort to bioinformatics predictions, and there are a number of web servers for that that are available. We have our own feature, uh, and this can also be used to guide the docking. Um, I'm working in an NMR lab doing computations, uh, so, so we implemented a lot of NMR data in, in Haddock. And in the 2.2 versions, we have the full support for uh, pseudo contact chip, for example, for the NMR people in the audience, but also residue dipolar couplings. And very recently, we published uh, a paper in Structure about uh, the use of cryo electron microscopy data into ad hoc. This is not yet in the version uh, which is released, or it's also not available in the web server. This will be for some future release. So, the protocol itself, the docking protocol, in short, uh, 
there are three stages. And uh, in the first stage, which we call IT0, uh, the molecules are treated as rock solids, so rigid docking. In the second phase, we heat up the system using some kind of simulated annealing protocol to allow for and introduce also flexibility. And in the final stage, we refine the solution in explicit solvent, adding a, a shell of water on the complexes and performing some gentle, gentle and quite short refinement. So just in short, uh, the first stage, typically you generate a large number of models. Uh, the default settings uh, will uh, sample in the order of 10,000 conformations and write to disk uh, 1,000. Uh, these are parameters that you need to change if uh, depending on the amount of information that you have or if you have no information at all. Uh, molecules are rigid. Uh, one feature of ad hoc is that it can handle ensembles of conformation. So even if you are doing a rigid body docking at this stage, you can give as input an ensemble of NMR structures, of multiple homology models, of snapshots from molecular dynamic simulation. And here the restraints are key to bring the molecule together. Uh, after this stage, there is a first selection that happens. So we only uh, retain a, a fraction of the models that generate. Default settings will be 200 out of the 1,000. Are passed to the semi-flexible simulated annealing stage. And here we uh, progressively increase the flexibility in the system. Uh, first along sidechain only, and in the second phase of the refinement process along sidechain and backbone flexibility. And this is, uh, by default, this is done automatically by analyzing the contacts that are made in, in a molecule at the start of, the, of this stage. So you don't have to predefine which regions become flexible, but only the interface becomes flexible. So the remaining of the molecules are kept rigid, which means that you cannot model allosteric conformational changes, for example, that would occur upon binding. Uh, what you can expect in terms of conformational changes is, say, for protein-protein modeling in the order of maximum two angstrom. It doesn't sound that much, but uh, in the docking field, everything which will show conformational changes about 2.5 angstrom already falls into the category of challenging systems. So now we take typically all those models, solvate them in a water layer, and then perform the short molecular dynamic simulation. In this case, it's, uh, it's Cartesian dynamics. In the previous case, what we call IT1, the semi-flexible stage, we are using torsion angle dynamics. Uh, ADOC is using CNS for the structure calculations, uh, which is uh, related to XPRO, XPRO NIH. It's all coming out of, of CHARM. And this is, uh, some of you might know CNS for both X-ray refinement, but also NMR structure calculations. So after, at the end of the protocol, we basically uh, score all those models to rank them. And we have different scoring uh, functions at the different stages. Uh, but basically, if you look at the, the final models, that will be the models here. Yeah. The water refinement or score is a very simple function, which takes the Van der Waals energy, Lena Jones potential, 20% of the electrostatic energy, an empirical dissolvation term which accounts for, for example, the burial of hydrophobic surfaces. So it's a bonus to bury hydrophobic surfaces. You will pay a penalty if you pay if you bury charges. Uh, so the function is very simple, uh, but it works fine in our hands for a variety of systems. So both protein nucleic acid, protein protein, which is why we keep the number rather round and simple. We could probably optimize it to the second or third of uh, ten decimal, but it will not have much. Uh, meaning in terms of precision anyway. So I've listed here uh, a number of relevant papers. Some of these were already uh, listed on, on the website. So the, the original paper uh, where the, the approach was first described dates from 2003 in JAX. And then uh, a very useful paper, uh, paper if you're going to use the, the web server in particular is the Nature Protocol uh, paper from 2010. In that paper, and I will come back to that, uh, you will find uh, information about the formats of the PDB files, how to define counter ions, ions, for example, uh, how to deal with small ligands, and also the format of the various types of restraints is, is defined in that paper. So that's uh, say a seminal paper when it comes to using the web server. And we recently published um, three chapters in um, 
methods in molecular biology that are basically giving the protocol how to use the, the web server. And that's the 2014 paper here. And then uh, an, another chapter describes the modeling of protein peptide complexes. Peptides are more challenging because of the intrinsic flexibility. So we have a protocol that we published also recently. And uh, the last uh, publication listed here is a chapter describing the use of the local version of Hadoop. So that will be the, the protocol to follow if you want to run it on, a, on your local resource using SV grid uh, installation. Although that chapter describes the use of Hadoop 2.2, but this will appear soon. So in terms of documentations, there are several uh, sites where you can find documentation. One of them is the Wiedemar uh, website. So Wiedemar uh, was a European project to provide a, a streamlined interface uh, for structural biology and especially NMR, and making use of grid uh, computing resources in Europe, but also in the US. And uh, so if you go to the website and uh, you, you can find the URL here, uh, you will find a, a number of, of tutorials of actually wiki pages um, where different types of uh, documentation, for example, if you want to use a small angle X-ray scattering data to score um, out of models, you will find the scripts that allow you to, to do that. Uh, you find links, and I come back to that, to PDB tools, for example, to clean, manipulate PDB files before haddocking. And I will explain you why this is important. Uh, chemical shift scoring for the NMR people and some general information. Uh, on the same page, there are also a number of tutorials that are available. A few of those have even be, been translated into uh, Mandarin. So hopefully they speak about Haddock, but I cannot tell you because I can't read it. Uh, again, here uh, you find two examples of using the web uh, interface uh, guiding you through the process. And also important, if you're running local version, a case study how to prepare the input files for manual uh, run. So next to uh, so uh, next to those pages, uh, and I will come back to that. We have also uh, the online manual pages of Adoc, and uh, more importantly, uh, the software is provided not only on SP Grid as local installation, but uh, as a web server, which is uh, where the interface is basically running uh, on our website, on a group website here in Utrecht. Uh, you might find a red version of the interface. You might find a blue version of the interface as the one that you see here in front, uh, on your screen. Uh, this one is sending the jobs to a, a say worldwide grid of, uh, of computing resources. So we are currently supported on more than 40 sites, one of them being the Fermilab in the US. So there are a number of ad hoc jobs running on the US uh, grid resource for collaboration with the Open Science Grid uh, and SP Grid actually. What you also see here on the web server is that we have different interfaces that are uh, corresponding to increasing levels of complexity. So there is a very simple interface where you only need to define a few uh, residues that define the interaction region and, and the docking can proceed. Uh, and then you have the, the more expert interface where you can upload your custom distance restraints files and the guru interface, which allows you to manipulate probably more than 500 parameters that define the, the, the docking protocols and, and settings. You also find the multibody interface here. And this is the one that you want to use if you have more than two molecules to dock. Note that this is also the interface that, that, that you can use uh, if you want to deal with large conformational changes within one protein, you can think of cutting your problem into pieces, cutting your protein into pieces, and docking the, the, the pieces together onto the target. Uh, and that will that can be done with this multibody interface. And we probably, we have a paper in, in structure about this, uh, describing this, uh, this way of, of doing things. Um, the refinement interface is a very simple interface, which actually only performs the water refinement stage of ad hoc. So if you have generated, for example, a complex by simple superimposition, and you just want to refine the interface, you can use that uh, inter uh, that server. It does not uh, change the orientation of the molecule. It just takes them as is and perform the refinement. So it's a way of, of removing clashes, for example, within an interface. And the last uh, server that you see that's called file upload. When you are using the, the web server, 
uh, once your data have been validated, you, you are returned a parameter file that contains all the data for the docking. So you can edit that file, change one parameter, like increasing the number of models that you want to generate, and resubmit that file directly into the upload interface. So you don't have to edit again all the forms uh, for all the different uh, fine tuning uh, parameters that you have changed. So what is happening uh, behind the scene? Uh, the server will take the PDB files and the restraints files, different uh, flavors of them, and, and perform the validation. So the, this part will be generated generate to the web server. Uh, it allows you to define all the parameters. And once this has all been done, uh, the run is, uh, is queued on a local system here and then starts the, the, the ad hoc process. And what you see here basically is what will also happen if you run it locally. So the first step is to generate topologies, parameters for your molecule, combine them, and then start the docking, performing the three stages that I just described below. Uh, the runs will run on your local resource, depending on how you set up things, or might run on the grid if you are using the, the, the web server. There is a post-processing analysis, which is done at two stages. Um, this is done locally on also resources, and the results are returned to you. So if I now uh, compare the, the server version of Haddock and, and the local run, there are a number of things that the server will do for you automatically uh, that you will have to do manually if you were to run it locally. So uh, I, toward the end of the presentation, I will show you a, a number of, of, of steps, what you should do and worry about if you run it locally. But here are the things that the server does for you when you upload files. Uh, so PDB file validation, uh, it's going to check if the file has a proper PDB format. It's going to check for duplication of residues. Um, we cannot deal with uh, multiple chains with the same residue numbering within one file. So if you want to dock a molecule onto a dimeric uh, complex, a homodimer, you will have to renumber the second chain of the homodimer to avoid duplication in numbering. So if the server detects, detects a, a duplication of in numbering, it's going to return an error, and you would have to correct it. It's going to check also uh, if ions in your structure are properly defined, meaning that we want to, you have to define in the name and the residue name of the ion the charge state. So the residue name for a calcium ion will be in the PDB file CA2 meaning that it's a charge plus two calcium ions. And the atom name in a PDB file will be then written as CA plus two. Uh, this is described in box three of our Nature Protocol 2010 paper. Uh, what you will also find, uh, if, especially if you have a high, high resolution crystal structure, you might have multiple occupancies of side chains, meaning that you see different conformations. And here, if this is the case, the the server will complain about it and uh, return you an error message, and then you will have to think about what you want to do with these multiple occupancies. Uh, so it's not going to solve the problem for you, but uh, you have to think what to do. You could split the file in, into multiple files. Uh, what the server does also is to run uh, mole property. So we're using the reduce software from mole property, uh, which is correcting small issues in your PDB input structures for proteins. For example, checking the side chain of uh, asparagines or glutamine, sw swapping them if, we, if required. And we also use small probability to automatically define the protonation state of histidine residues. So for docking purposes, you have to worry if you have a charged histidine or not. And if it's not charged, you should worry where to put the charge, uh, where to put the proton. So the server does that automatically for you, but you can also override that mode and define manually what you want to do. Uh, further, what the server does uh, at the easy and, and the more advanced level, you can simply define a list of amino acids on the surface that, uh, that correspond to the binding site or that have been mapped by some experimental methods. And the server will automatically define surface neighbors of, of those residues. So we call active residues the, the residues that have that been identified as being part of the interaction. But since experimentally you never detect fully the interface, it's important to have a good coverage. Uh, so we define what we call passive residues, and these are the surface neighbors. So if you run on the local version, you will have to do this manually, select which are the surface neighbors. If you run on the server, it can be done automatically. 
Uh, some structures might have gaps, uh, meaning for, or, or can be uh, homodimeric structures. Uh, in that case, uh, when you run the, the high temperature simulated annealing, the refinement stage of ad hoc, the, the separated parts of the structure could drift apart, meaning that you induce conformational changes that are irrealistic. So the server would detect that and automatically define a few distance restraints between a backbone atom to keep the structure together. Again, if you run locally, this is something you should worry about uh, and define. Uh, on the restraint side, the server will also validate uh, the format. So it's checked the syntax, meaning if you are defining a distance restraint, it should have two selections, each between brackets and three numbers. That's the CNS format. But what it will not do for you is check if the selection actually exists in your PDB. So if you define atoms that are not following the nomenclature, which is in a PDB, uh, they, the, the restraints will, will be accepted, but they will not be effective. Again, for the format of the restraints, uh, I refer you to the Nature Protocol paper, Box 4. Uh, if you have small ligands or cofactors in your input uh, models, structures, the server will also automatically generate topologies and parameters using the product uh, web server. Actually, we, we run a local version of product for that. Um, you have to define those as heteroatom in, in a PDB file. It's also recommended for running locally or on the server to also clean the PDBs. When you download PDBs from, a, from the database, they might be uh, small molecules that have been co-crystallized that are coming out of the, the, the buffer, which have nothing to do with your biological system. So it, it's always uh, uh, better to, to check your PDB, remove anything which is irrelevant for, for the modeling process. And finally, the server will do a post analysis of your docking results, performing cluster analysis. So we cluster models that resemble each other, and we calculate uh, average statistics on each cluster and rank the clusters. And it also presents you a graphical output of the, of the results. So you see uh, one such example, these are bits taken from, a, from an output file where you see for each cluster, you will get the score and the statistics, and you can also visualize how are the scores versus, for example, this is the interface ligand parameter. So now if you want to run locally, you will have to do a number of things uh, by yourself. So I also mentioned it's important to, to prepare your PDBs, so remove double occupancies. Uh, we have actually a small uh, Python script to do that. Uh, we have uh, quite a number of useful Python scripts to, to renumber PDBs, extract part of it, change the chains. So I think everyone is writing again those scripts. But uh, uh, so if you follow this GitHub, this is our ad hoc repository on GitHub, uh, you can download freely those PDB tools and, uh, and they, they are useful to manipulate PDBs. Renumber them, for example, to avoid duplication, or if you have two chains with the same numbering, this will also apply to DNA molecule, for example. You will have to renumber the strands so, to, so that there is no overlapping numbering. Uh, while the server accepts an ensemble of structure in terms of PDB format, so a single file that contains multiple conformations, when you run locally, you need to split those files into single files and create a listing of them. And you will have to also manually define the protonation state of these links. And this is defined in a parameter file. So you will have to prepare your restraint file also. So even if you only have a list of amino acids, you will have to create the CNS format uh, restraint file, defining manually the surface neighbors. Uh, the files themselves can be also generated online. So we have an interface on the web server called GenTable that allows you to generate those restraints files for up to six molecules and any combinations of, of restraints. Uh, you need to generate a file which is called new HTML, and this basically contains uh, information about your input PDBs, input restraints, number of molecules. And that's the first file that you need to create before calling Haddock. If you are dealing with small molecules in your system, you will have to provide parameters and topologies in order to, for things to run. Uh, I told you uh, the, the server, we use products, uh, parameters, uh, but there are other ways of generating uh, topologies and parameters that, can, uh, com that are compatible with, with, with ad hoc. You will need to generate them in a format which is compatible with CNS. And you will need to edit the run parameter files to change any settings that, that you require. And this can be done uh, 
simply using your favorite editor, which can be VI, or you can do it online where you will edit forms uh, using uh, the, the link which is provided here below. CNS Solve is also offering an interface to edit uh, parameter files for CNS, and that should also recognize this, uh, this type of parameters. So in summary, for a local run, you need to prepare your new.html file manually or online. You will call ad hoc once in the directory where new.html is, is present, and this will generate a complete directory uh, with protocols, tools, the structure directories where the models will come. Uh, the next step will be to go into that directory and edit the parameter files that defines all the parameters for the docking. This file contains, for example, the histidine protonation state. Uh, if you have small ligands, you will need to copy those parameter files into the what we call the topar directory, which contains the topology files, and then start again ad hoc in that directory. So, so setting up a run means calling twice ad hoc. And for the post-processing, you would have to do the clustering and the analysis of the cluster yourself. And the entire process is uh, explained online. So I will just show you a few websites so that you can see where things are. And then I will take questions. So uh, online on our group webpage, bonvalab.org. If you click on software, you will find here the links to Haddock. You will also find the links to a number of uh, other software. You find here this PDB tool software, which I uh, commented about. Very useful to manipulate PDB files. Um, and here you have the link to, to the Haddock software, to the web server, and to the Green Enable web server. So let's first have a look at uh, the Haddock software. Uh, so some general information and here you will find, let's go to the manual. So this is the online manual for using the software. Right here. And here you will find information about input file and restraints, preparing PDB files, uh, different parameters, what they mean, how to change them. Uh, analysis, it's going to explain you what is being run by ad hoc in terms of analysis and how to perform analysis manually. For example, here, manual analysis, you find here the analysis, how to do structure statistics, clustering, cluster analysis, or rerunning the analysis for a specific cluster. So refer to this online manual uh, for this kind of information. I mentioned you can edit and create a number of files online as well. So I, if I go to the start pages, so let's go to this one, so you can see here, Generate air restraint file. This is this chain table interface where you can define a list of amino acids for each molecule. Click on generate airs and then save the simple text file which is coming out of it to give to Haddock. Um, this one would be for multi body docking. Here we are now on the Haddock server. Uh, so you can see here for many different types of molecules. So you have many more selections that you can give and any combination of those. And here you can choose a run.cns file, which you have created by typing ad hoc first, where the new .html file is present and edit it. And I should have such a file, which is open here. And you see here uh, all the possible parameters and options here you find the protonation state of histidine. Uh, you can define automatically or manually semi-flexible interface. And there is a large number of, of options that you can specify here. Uh, and the last option, all at the bottom. So this one is set up to run on my laptop. It's not where we run uh, ad hoc usually, but you see that I'm using to run on my laptop. Simple C shell as Q command, and I'm running two process at the same time. And I need to define where CNS is located. So you can save this file and then start uh, the, the, the docking process. So finally, maybe just a glimpse of, of the server itself. So this is the, the Haddock Science UNL page, where you find not only Haddock, but another, a number of other tools that uh, we have been developing, like Seaport for bioinformatic predictions. And if you go to the server, click on Go to Service, you find here the various interfaces, and we can take a look at the expert one, just as an example. Uh, the menus are, are clickable, so 
you should unfold the menu in order to specify the options. And you find at this level, for example, here I'm automatically defining this in protonation state. So you can overrun, overrule this, and then manually define those. Um, sampling parameters, this is where you will change the number of models that you want to generate. If I really want to generate 10,000 models in there, 1,000, uh, this can be changed here. Uh, clustering options, if you want to cluster based on root mean square deviations or fraction of common contact, this can be changed here. And to run on the web server, you will need to register and then you, you get a username, password, and, and, and you can submit your run in that way. So what, uh, maybe a little more information which might be useful in general. So first of all, this will be an output of the web server where you see different clusters. The clusters are ranked based on their score, the Haddock score. Uh, but it's not automatic that cluster number one is the best one. The number of the cluster tells you the size of the cluster. Uh, so you see here all the clusters and then the graphical representation of the results. Now, finally, I want to show you uh, here are the services. So, well, the registration is here in red. Sometimes people have problems finding it. And here, there is one link which is interesting also because there is a list of modified amino acids that are supported by Haddock. Uh, so if you don't find your preferred modified amino acid here, uh, you won't be able to run it on a server. You might be able to run it locally provided you define parameters for those. And it's not always trivial. So we have quite a number of, of modified amino acids like phosphorylated ones. Uh, you, you find a cysteine without the, the, the proton, we use this one if you are coordinating metals, for example, zinc. And you will find acetylate, acetylated lysine, methylated lysines, uh, a number of other uh, modified amino acids. Uh, if they are not there and you will need them, you could always uh, contact us to, to try to, we can see if we can help you with that. Um, a modified amino acid will not uh, you, you cannot leave it in a PDB file as is. You have to define it as a zero at all, unless it is defined in this page on the server. So those are all those amino acids that are defined here can be left as atoms in the, in the server page. So that's pretty much it. And maybe the only thing that I should show you also. So now I'm uh, on the terminal window. You can see that I have SB Grid software installed on my laptop. I'm going to Haddock 2.2, uh, which is not part of SB Grid. I'm just showing you uh, in the examples. Just how does a new.html file looks like. So it is a simple text file. I hope you can see that which defines in this particular case, it's, it's a protein protein docking. So we have to provide the restraint file for the distance restraints. In this case, there is also a second file, which is relaxation and isotropy data from NMR. I provide two PDB file. I provide a list of PDB file because I have an ensemble of NMR structure. I define the segment ID for the two proteins and the run number. So you can increment that number. Uh, Haddock will refuse to overwrite an existing run. So it will stop if the run also already exists. And having this new .html, typing Haddock is going to build this directory structure. And then you will have to edit the run.cns file, which I showed you just before. So I think I should stop at this time and uh, take questions. Thank you for your attention. Great, thank you very much. Um, if anyone has questions, you can, uh, you can chat them into the chat window, or if you would rather ask them yourself, you can raise your flag. There's a raise your flag function in the menu, and I can um, unmute your mic and you can ask it. Uh, so we've got uh, a couple of questions here in the chat. Uh, one is, um, uh, what is the uh, interest to run Haddock in sort of a local environment? That's sort of question one. And then two, um, how to have a sort of guru access uh, to have more fun using Haddock? Mm -hmm. So maybe the first question, so what is the advantage of running locally? Uh, 
maybe computing time if you have plenty of, uh, of resources uh, things will run faster so you might uh, you, you might run as many runs as, as you want if you run on the web server we limit so you can submit 100 runs to the server but we limit the number of concurrent runs per user to five uh, nowadays we are sending a majority of, uh, of jobs to the grid so this comes with an overhead uh, but you are getting CPU for free, so you should be you should accept that it takes a bit more time. So if you are in, if you are in a hurry and you have say 200 uh, CPU cores available, you can probably run your own run locally in um, half an hour, one hour maybe, depending on some settings on the size of your software. If you run on the server and it goes onto the grid, it will take more time. So that's the that's the price that you have to pay. On the other hand, the server does a lot of pre-processing and post-processing for you. Uh, so what you win maybe in terms of, of computing time, if you have enough local resource, you might lose in terms of pre and post processing. As for the Google access, so by default, you get easy access. And then if you just drop me an email, then uh, I will uh, give you Google access. So just to, to avoid that people start changing all possible parameters and wasting CPU, we just uh, provide only easy access in first instance, but if someone is asking for a higher level access, uh, it's never a, a limitation. Uh, we had another question. How is the explicit solvent selected for each molecule? So the solvent that we are using, so we have two solvents that are supported in a server, and you can uh, define that either in run.cns or in the, in the interface of the, of the server. And probably to change the solvent, you, you must have, you must be in the expert level or even maybe guru level. Mm, let me just check. Uh, so the solvent for the water model, we are simply using uh, here, you see solvent to use for the light situation. So the water model that we are using is a TIP3P model. Uh, the force field that we are using for proteins is OPRS. Uh, united atom, although you can have all atom present. Uh, and the other model that we have implemented is uh, DMSO as a mimic of a membrane. Uh, it's, it's a poor mimic of a membrane, but uh, that's, that's all we have at this time. So in terms of um, putting the water on the system, so in, in the final stage of ad hoc, uh, you basically, we, we have a free equilibrated box of water which we move around the system and we shave all the water that are further away from than eight angstrom from the surface. And this is what is being used in, a, in the <coughs> solvated refinement. So it might be that some waters uh, will end up at the interface. Uh, it's not very likely. Haddock also has a solvated docking modding, uh, uh, mode. So if you are expecting water to play a key role in your interaction, you could start the docking from uh, solvated molecules. Uh, we only recommend to do that if you have uh, really good information to drive the docking, otherwise it's not improving things a lot. And this is just an illustration actually of, of what the protein, so instead of docking from from start of, from shave molecule basically, we start the docking from molecules that have one layer of water, you will end up with uh, what we call an encounter complex with water at the interface, which you have to remove to some extent. And this is done in a Monte Carlo process where we compare basically the water with the probabilities of finding a specific water between two types of amino acids or between amino acids and DNA. And then at this stage, you might remove all water if it's not required, so you can keep a few. And then the water are taken through the, through the protocol. What, uh, if you have a few key water molecules in your system that you want to include, you can give them in principle uh, from the start and they will be kept, uh, provided you, you, you name them properly. So we had a, a question. Can you comment on uh, protein DNA complexes? And in particular, can you uh, comment on counter ions and can they be added? Okay, so protein DNA complexes. Uh, so we have a, a protocol that, that works for protein DNA complexes, and, uh, which is also applicable to protein RNA. So, so one problem with uh, protein DNA complexes is the flexibility of the DNA. And it's, uh, you can basically not predict a priori what's going to happen. So we also have published a number of paper for that, uh, where our, our standard protocol for protein DNA will be to perform a first docking run with quite some flexibility in the DNA, 
analyze the solutions that are coming out of that run and generate an ensemble of prevent DNA molecule. And uh, that you can do. Uh, uh, we have a web server called, well, not this one, uh, called 3D Dart, uh, which uh, you can use to you can use to generate pre-bent DNA conformation in any form you want. So you see here the title is written in bent DNA molecule. So you could generate such a conformation and then that, uh, uh, give that a starting point. Now about counter ions, uh, a major part of the protocol uh, runs in vacuum. Uh, so we don't add counter ions to the system. Uh, our, DNA pro our DNA parameters actually have uh, reduced charges on the phosphate. So the, the, the force field that we use, uh, we only have a charge of uh, minus 0.5 on the background phosphate to avoid too strong attraction or repulsion. So uh, in the water refinement stage, it's only water which is added and not DNA. You have to realize that the, the, pro the protocol is extremely short. If you are thinking of molecular dynamic simulations, we are speaking of a few tenths of picoseconds. This is the, the, the type of refinement. Uh, so nothing serious is going to happen. So if you want to run equilibrium simulations, there you need to add properly counter ions, but they are not included in, in our protocol. So um, in a related question, uh, is it recommended to always minimize peptide conformations before docking, similar to an MD simulation? So uh, for peptides, so, so the protocol that we devise for peptides is uh, basically you can run molecular dynamic simulations of peptides. It doesn't mean that the conformations that you are sampling there have anything to do with the bond conformation of the peptide. Uh, but it's an approach and you, you can take snapshots. If you run MD, I think you should minimize because if you're sampling, say, at 300 Kelvin in molecular dynamics, there is kinetic energy in your system. And you want to start uh, your modeling from an energy minimized structure. Uh, there are sometimes runs that are exploding into ad hoc because uh, people use the bad homology model and there might be clashes inside the protein itself, so not the interaction. So this you will not see problems at the rigid body stage because we are only calculating intermolecular energies. But once you put flexibility in the system, you have these huge clashes inside the structure that makes that the simulation is unstable and the system crashes basically. So yes. Can you define which residues are more likely to be interacting pairs uh, within a list of active site residues? Uh, not really. So we have, uh, so there's two things, uh, well, uh, there, there are a number of things that you can do for that. Uh, first of all, we have two types of restraints that uh, you can upload restraints in two different ways. Expert level, for example, you can define restraints here just by specifying a list of amino acids. If you do that, the restraints that will be generated here, a fraction of those will be automatically discarded at random for each docking trial that you do. And this is defined in this distance refine menu here. You see that by default, we delete 50% of the restraints that you input, meaning that if you have false positive from time to time, they will be gone. But this will also mean that your good restraints from time to time will be gone. Now, if you trust, if you have restraints that you really trust and you want them to be there all the time, you could generate manually a restraint file and upload it in, in what we call the unambiguous category. It doesn't mean that the restraints has to be unambiguous. You can put anything in there. But any, anything that you put in there will be used for the docking process. And if you want to give more weight to one specific distance, the way to do that will be to uh, duplicate or put several entries of the same distance restraints in the restraint file. Because this will mean effectively that, that you add up the energy of each restraint uh, multiple time. But you cannot fine tune more than that. We had a question about how many molecules is it possible to use? Is there a limit? Uh, it's possible to do more than three, for example, DNA and more than one protein? So the, the current uh, implementation is six. Uh, you have to realize that it's um, the complexity increases uh, very much when you increase the number of molecules. So I think modeling larger uh, assemblies only makes sense if you have some good information to drive your model, your, your docking. 
<clears throat> and ideally, you should also be able to define, to know which molecule interact with which in your ensemble of X molecules. We are currently working on a version where we leave this limit of six, uh, but it's not yet uh, out there. So we have and you can the... mix molecule types completely, yes. All right, great. So all the, uh, the, uh, the askers of questions have passed on their thanks, so, I, so they say thank you. I'll take the, the last question on a sort of related note. Um, you alluded to some functionality with uh, uh, CryoEM and some new features. What, what new features are you working on for future releases for uh, Haddock? So, so we have, uh, so the CryoEM is there, but it's not in a, in a version that's ready for, for release. So if someone wanted it, we, we can, we can distrib distribute it. Uh, but in general, uh, I also want to have the web server in line with the local installation. Uh, further, we have also been working at uh, implementing coarse grain model. So we want to have multi-scale modeling abilities uh, to be able to model much larger systems, uh, meaning by, by saving computing time. And, uh, and here in, the, in Utrecht, one of my colleagues, Mark Bardus, is uh, doing solid state LMR uh, on membrane system, membrane protein and complexes. And that's also something that we're going to work on in uh, the, the coming years. So implementing ways of dealing with the membrane uh, implicitly or explicitly during the modeling process. So these are other things that we're going to do. Are there any plans to implement algorithms to deal with uh, conformational dynamics in the process and as opposed to um, rigid models? So, well, it, 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 uh, that's related a bit to one of the questions I'm uh, uh, reading here. So, so our models are, are not rigid in a sense, there is flexibility in the system. So we allow for conformational changes in the interface. Uh, now, if you want to, to model large conformational changes, it's uh, more efficient to try to model them beforehand and give an ensemble of conformation uh, a starting point to the docking. So this is something that we have been doing, for example, for, for if you have large rigid body domain types of motion, so you could either pre-sample them. Uh, this is what we are doing for, for DNA docking, for example. So, so pre-sample DNA conformations, band conformation. It's very hard to, to sample large conformational changes during the docking process. It's, it's already hard to sample them in molecular dynamic simulation. It takes a long time. The time scales are, are very long. All simulations are very short in terms of time scales. And, uh, we want to try to keep at least the, the, the running time uh, reasonable. If you have to run one month for a docking process, it, I think it's not going to, to be worth it. Great. So with that, uh, I think we'll, we'll call it. So Alexander, thank you very much for the, the great webinar. Great. Yeah, and we'll be adding uh, Haddock 2.2 this month. So look, uh, look for Haddock 2.2 on your installs. So great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.